Hey guys, I was just coming on to say hey, happy spring. Oh my goodness, it's finally spring around the farm. Everything is blooming, everything's warming up, and I absolutely love it. The birds know it. We are getting chicken eggs like nobody's business. More, more eggs than we really know what to do with. <laughs> Even with all my ideas of preserving, it's just still too much. So um, luckily we get to share with friends and neighbors, so that's always nice. Uh, I was going to show you guys the meat birds and show you how big they've gotten. Uh, we just butchered 25 meat birds with a friend of ours and um, I think it was last weekend that we did that and it went great. The chicken plucker is a godsend. Oh my gosh. So if you look for brand new chicken pluckers, they are anywhere from like three to four hundred dollars. It's crazy. Um, and a chicken plucker is, you know, it's basically like a, a big round um, cylinder thing that you throw the chickens in after you've, you know, slaughtered them um, and dunked them in the boiling water, which helps make the feathers come out easier. Um, and then it spins around really fast and it has like these little rubber fingers all inside of it. And so it just spins around in there and it gets all the feathers off. Well, last time, every time really that we've butchered our chickens, we didn't have a chicken plucker. So we had to pluck all those feathers out by hand. I was like, this is for the birds. Uh, no pun intended, but I mean, it takes forever. You know, you've got all these birds and sitting there plucking them all out and then you still have the process of taking them inside and um, chopping them up and getting them packaged and everything. So it's quite the process. But anyway, chicken pluckers can be expensive. Well, Joe found one on Craigslist for like 50 bucks and the guy was getting rid of it because something was wrong with it and it wasn't working. And you know, Joe being the MacGyver handy guy that he is, he was like, well, I'm just gonna go get it and see if I can figure out what's wrong with it. So he did and he fixed it and it's awesome. I mean, the last time we did 25 birds, it took us um, quite a few hours to do it. This time we were done from beginning to end. Um, I think it was like four hours and that's, you know, everything, packaging them up and all of that. So it was amazing. I was so excited about that plucker. Um, so we've got our, our last batch of 25 birds that are going to be ready to be butchered here in the next week and a half, two weeks. Um, so I'm really excited to get some fresh meat. The last batch we did for our friends, they paid for the chickens and paid to have them stay here on the farm with us and um, actually came out and helped us with the whole process. So that was kind of cool. Um, but you know, we're excited to have our own meat. <laughs> uh, so it's been, it's been a little bit. And I think what I'm going to do is a, a constant order of the meat birds because we eat a lot of chicken. Um, that's one of our, our go-to meats here on the farm is chicken. So, you know, you get them and then it takes a couple months before they're ready to butcher, um, anywhere from seven, eight to 10 weeks. So we're going to try to make sure that we always have meat birds here on the farm so that we don't run out like we did this last time. So yeah, let me walk over really quick. I think my phone might die soon. I'm, I'm not on my good camera. I'm just using my phone because it was such a beautiful day. I thought I would come out and say hey and show you what's going on around here. Um, first, let me show you who's checking, checking us out here. Got Gracie and Sarah. <laughs> Look at that beautiful cow. You enjoying the spring weather, Grace? Yeah? She's drooling. I was standing in the stanchion, which is where we keep all the treats. Huh. Did you think you are going to get a treat? You want one? We get these little alfalfa cubes, and she thinks that they're the best thing in the world. Huh, Grace? Yeah. Come here. Come here. Come on. No. Oh. What is that? Good. Oh, oh. Come here. Come here. So she's leery of the electric fence. That's why she's acting like that. Kind of sucks we have to have the electric fence for Luke because he destroys everything. And Gracie's just so sweet. She wouldn't hurt a fly. Well, she would hurt flies. She hates flies, actually. <laughs> Look at Sarah's back there. Give mom alfalfa and then I'll go get the udder. In the caddy. It's, yes, it is. It's down in the caddy. Go look. 
<laughs> Isn't she pretty? Ain't she pretty? That's my pretty Jersey cow. Yeah. Yep. All right. Let's go um, show you guys the meat birds. Let me lock these girls in. Sarah got out the other day. Well, I let her out because we let them out into the the yard a lot to let them eat the grass and everything. And Sarah has figured out that there's a hole that is not fenced in and she took off down to the neighbor's yards and I spent probably an hour and a half chasing her down, running through the forest. Every time I get close to her, she would dart off in the other direction. I was sweating my butt off. I was so mad. I could have just, yeah, anyway. <laughs> So use one of the other erasers. Use a different eraser on a different pencil. Homeschool problems. No, no. It's creative writing time. So Parker, he hates creative writing, which is crazy to me because I love writing. You tell me a topic and I could just go on for days, but he's like, a story about butterflies? Um. <laughs> There once was a butterfly and then he just stops and I'm like dude you got a whole page you better get busy so he likes to come up with reasons why he can't do it this time it was he couldn't find the eraser even though there's like 20 pencils right in front of his face with erasers anyway let me show you guys these meat birds hey little babies got 25 of these bad boys see how big they're getting yep I turned the light off today because it's warm. It's nice. It's like 65 out here. Hey guys, they're chilling. I like to open up the chicken tractor, even though it's movable and we've been moving it around the yard. They like to come out and explore and I'm okay with that. They have a hard time walking because they're so big. Look how big their feet are compared to their, their bodies. <laughs> yep, so about another week and a half for these guys. And then we'll put them in the freezer. And I'm excited. Like I said, we are in, in desperate need of some chicken stock. And I'll get it from the store if I have to. But I don't want to. So, I don't know. We'll see. Joe's family's coming to visit us for the first time, so we're really excited about that. And I told them, I said, you know the chickens are due to be butchered when, when your family's here. <laughs> He's like, so? I'm like, well, are you still gonna do it? I mean, you know, some people don't like that or, or um, get grossed out by it or whatever, but it's kind of like you don't really have a choice with the meat birds. When it's time to butcher them, you gotta butcher them. Because if you let them grow too long, one, they'll start dying off. We lost four from the last batch. If you let them get too big, you know, they're just, they can't, they can't walk around. They can't get to the food bowl. Um, they can't even breathe right. They're wheezing. So they get really big, really fast. So when it's time to butcher them, you got to make it happen or else you're just going to start losing them. But uh, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, we've got Dr. John is, that's our vet. He's scheduled to come out April 15th. And we're going to go ahead and artificially inseminate Gracie like we did last year. Um, for those of you that don't know, that's our dairy cow. You know, funny story. I came outside the other day and Sarah, our calf that I just showed you guys, she was in the middle of the pasture just mooing like crazy. And I'm like, what in the world? Because she's a pretty quiet calf. I mean, she doesn't really moo that much so I thought maybe she was stuck in the mud or something was wrong with her so I came out here and she was just mooing like there was nothing wrong with her so then all of a sudden I noticed Luke which is our bull was all up on her back end smelling her and trying to mount her and Sarah was actually standing for him and she would kind of do a little walk you know and then she would look back like what's up homie and then she'd do a little walk and she'd be like mm -hmm. You know, and I'm like, whoa, 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 what in the world is going on? Because Sarah is only five months old. And typically, depending on the breed, you're looking at eight or nine months to a year before they go into their first heat. And so I'm like, surely she cannot be in heat already. And anyway, I called the vet and um, also looking online and everything. And apparently 
depending on the breed, they can go into heat as early as five months old. And I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. So I come out here and I immediately separate the cows because we don't want Sarah pregnant. Um, she's too little. She wouldn't be able to calf successfully. And I separate them. And that evening I came out to feed them all. And sure enough, she had a foot long mucus string hanging out of her, which anybody that has cows, I mean, that's a pretty sure sign of being in heat. Um, or they also do that when they're getting ready to calf. So I'm like, you little stinker. Uh, so now that Sarah is potentially already going into heat every month, I am really playing musical cows. So I can no longer let them all be together because I don't know for sure when she's going to be in heat. Sometimes with the cows, it's hard to tell um, when they're in heat and when they're not. So to play it safe, you know, I can't put Gracie in with Luke all day thinking she's in heat for Luke to get her pregnant because Sarah's nursing. So Sarah needs to be with Gracie, um, you know, intermittently throughout the day. And it's not that I couldn't do it. It's just, I don't have time to sit here and play musical cows all day. You know, let Grace be with Luke cause I think Grace is in heat and I need her to breed with him. But, oh wait, let me put her back for Sarah cause Sarah's ready to nurse. Ain't nobody got time for that. So we are uh, thinking about Butchering Luke, um, kind of sad. You know, we've had him since he was three days old and our purpose for getting him was uh, kind of windy out here, was so that we would have our own bull here on the farm for breeding and that we wouldn't have to worry about paying for artificial insemination. Well, I'm learning quickly that paying the vet to come out and artificially inseminate Gracie once a year is much more inexpensive than feeding this bull all year long, fixing everything that he's breaking, the fencing, the feeder troughs, he breaks them. He broke the duck house. I mean, he literally flung it up and had it upside down on the ground. Um, we had to pay to electric, uh, put electric fencing up because he was breaking the fencing and getting into the neighbor's yard. I mean, it's just been one thing after another with Luke. And, you know, I can't go into his pasture to feed or water or clean out the stall without having the whip you know, some way to protect myself. Cause even though he doesn't mean to hurt me, he will hurt me. Uh, you know, he's strong and he's full of testosterone and it's just, it's hard. And on a small farm like this, where we're not in no big production of, you know, milk and whatever, we're, we're getting Gracie pregnant every year so that we can have a calf every year so that we can have fresh milk all year long and then keeping her calves to um, raise for meat, that's our goal. So it's just kind of looking like the benefits are not outweighing, you know, all the cost to have the bull on the farm. And really there has been no benefit at all yet. You know, we put them together January when Grace was in heat and she didn't get pregnant. So um, anyway, we still have bull semen with the vet from last year and uh, we're just going to go ahead and have her inseminated because we're already behind schedule of when we wanted Gracie to be pregnant. And now we're looking at having a winter calf this next year versus a fall calf and which is fine. It's just, you know, we're just getting later and later every month that passes and I need her to get pregnant so that we can continue to have milk next year. So yeah, I already scheduled it. So I'll be out here April 15th to do that. Hopefully that's successful. It's not always successful the first time. It was last year for Gracie. It worked out great. So that's that's what we're going to do. And, um, you know, Lukey's... Lukey, we'll see. Joe's not done with the butcher uh, freezer that he's building. So I guess we've got some time to think about it, uh, you know, what we're really going to do. But um, I'm, that's that's what we're leaning towards. So anyway, we'll see. We'll see. I, I, I feel bad and I know it's like some people are like, oh, that's so sad. How can you do that? And it's like, you know, it's different when you're out here. It's different when you're out here on the farm and you're paying to feed them every day and you're doing the physical work of cleaning out the stalls and building everything that they need, the shelters, you know, all that stuff. It's different and you start to realize, you know, what are the real priorities here? Um, a small homestead like this, I just don't think that we need a bull. I think that the cost is just definitely outweighing anything that he could do for us. You know, I pay the vet 90 bucks to come out and inseminate Gracie. $90 once a year versus everything that we've gone through this year with Luke. It's just not, 
it's not productive. So I'll show you guys it's little Sarah. She's drinking her milk. I'm excited after we wean Sarah off of Gracie, probably August time frame. I'll be back to milking Gracie every day because I won't have Sarah's help. And then I can finally get some of that cream that she's been holding back for the calf. Look at her. <laughs> you got milk bubbles. Milk bubbles, Sarah. Hi. Oh, yeah. Good stuff, huh? Good stuff. She's so big. She's half the size of Grace now. Anyway, I just wanted to come on and say hi to you guys. We've been so busy working on the greenhouse and getting everything ready. I haven't been able to put together um, some of my videos that I've been wanting to do, but I just wanted to let you know I'm still here and show you guys what's going on on the farm. Hope you all have a great day and you have a very blessed spring season. Talk to you later.